everyone welcome back to tech love channel in today's video we are going to discuss about types of arp and arp header so in this video let's first discuss about types of arp that is proxy arp let's have a small diagram for this we have our router 1 router 2 it is a small network separated by routers that we can see so this proxy arp is implemented to connect two different network segment that is connected by a router and as we know that initially a device send ARP request as broadcast but router cannot send broadcast messages or broadcast request. So where this proxy ARP is enabled by default and came into the picture. So now the router between both, both network, both source and destination will work as a proxy ARP and reply to their own network or you can say reply to their own local network. Also, the router forward its own MAC address to the other network during the communication. So here we have a PC and computer A and computer B. So in the ARP request, we can see the ARP request is from computer A. So the source MAC is computer A and the destination MAC is blank, 00, 0 as blank. So now on this ARP request, router will reply back and that will be ARP reply from router. So now the source MAC is router 1 MAC and the destination is computer A MAC. So this is how proxy ARP works and this is how the router work as a proxy ARP. Now let's discuss about the next one that is gracious ARP. So gracious ARP is used in advanced network. It is also performed by computer while booting up. So when computer turn on so that time it send the gracious arc computer also automatically broadcast its mac address to the entire network and so this is also play an important role uh, for ip assignment that allow dscp server to know from where the server has received the request and by default this gracious arc is generated by the router also for the 10 second is the interval time so each inter every 10 second each firewall send each router send the gracious arp updates to the other routers or other devices and in some cases you can say in some special cases this gracious arp can work for the arp request and the arp reply both this gracious ARP is also being used to update ARP table or you can say the switch table in the network. Gracious ARP also help us to know or to detect the IP conflict. So IP conflict is about like two computers in the same network having the same IP address. For this kind of detection, gracious ARP helps. Also, so in the gracious ARP, you can see that there will be source and destination IP address already set up for the communication. So whether it is a ARP request or ARP reply, it there will be source IP and destination IP in the packet. And the destination MAC, if there is no ARP or, or, or there is a no MAC address for the destination, for that reason, it use the broadcast MAC that is called as FFF. Let's now discuss about reverse address resolution protocol so this reverse address resolution protocol it is used by a client machine in a LAN network to request IP addresses IP address and IP address is replied by the RARP server reverse ARP server or that is generally nowadays we know that is DSCP server so network admin or you can say the server admin whoever manage the DSCP server or whoever manage the RARP server or if it is a router there we are managing the IP addresses so that's uh, the network admin is responsible for creating and mapping the MAC to the IP in the server so generally a new machine who does not have IP address that send the RARP broadcast request RARP server respond to this kind of broadcast uh, in this in that sense since we can say DSCP server respond back on the ARP request, RARP request. Now let's discuss about inverse address resolution protocol. Inverse address resolution protocol in ARP that we generally call it. 
so this ARP is generally used to find IP from the MAC address and this inverse ARP sometime being used very slowly for the device configuration inverse ARP by default enable in ATM network ATM network is the asynchronous transfer mode ATM and ATM is kind of a switching technique in which this inverse ARP is by default enabled and so when we configure a frame relay so it is dynamically this inverse ARP is dynamically map in the local network in the DLCI format that is formally we call it as a MAC DLCI called as data link connection identifier so this DLC is a kind of frame relay that is a 10 bit wide link local virtual circuit identifier so this is all about inverse ARP now let's discuss about uh, ARP poisoning this is a disadvantage of ARP so ARP poisoning is let's have a small diagram for this so ARP poisoning or ARP spoofing you, we can say that it's a cyber attack it is a kind of cyber attack we also call it ARP spoofing ARP case poisoning or ARP poison routing so this ARP spoofing or ARP poisoning is being used to exploit the weakness in ARP to disrupt you can say to disrupt the and redirect or a spy in the network traffic with this kind of attack attacker pretend to be the original or legitimate uh, source by doing the ARP spoofing ARP poisoning can also lead to the other attacks like man in the middle attack DOS denial of service attack or you can say session hijacking so here we can see that this hacker is just sitting between this two user Mike and Ray and this user is pretending to be for Mike it's pretending to be Ray and for Ray it is pretending to be Mike so this is how this hacker is spoofing himself pretending to be the original and then spying on that all the traffic all the communication that is happening between these both users so this is how ARP spoofing works and the hacker utilize this ARP spoofing to attack now let's move further and discuss about ARP header so in the ARP header we can see that this is the format of ARP header we can see that there will be hardware type protocol type hardware length protocol length operation so in the operation it's a operation code op code so we can see the request one is for request and two is for reply that's our operation code numbers then we can see over there it's a sender hardware address source hardware address sender protocol address destination hardware address and destination protocol address so in the hardware type one is being used for the internet so one is being used to identify that it is a ethernet hardware type now it's a protocol type so protocol type is being used in the network layer and uh, this hardware address length so this hardware address length is in bytes and that is 6 for the ethernet so now this protocol address length so this is 4 bytes as IP address length so 4 bytes means it's a 32 bit so that is why it is 4 for IP address operation code so that as we this just discussed that uh, operation code indicate that the packet is whether it is a uh, our request or it is our response or reply that we get to know by just seeing this number one or two then we can see the source hardware address sender hardware address so this is the hardware address mac address of source machine source protocol address that is the ip address of source machine destination hardware address so this is generally used in the reverse ARP request and this actually responds impact both on the destination hardware address and destination hardware and the layer 3 address and this destination protocol address so this is being used in the ARP request to identify the destination IP and also this is response carries for both the layer 3 address and the destination hardware address so this is the ARP header we can see in the 
ARP header packet format. So this is all about ARP headers and this is all about the ARP address resolution protocol part 2 video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please do comment. If you have any query or question, please do comment, like, share and subscribe and share with everyone. Thank you for watching.